Good day everybody. This is Dr. Sajjah Sanyal, Professor Department Chair. This is going to be the first demonstration of the knee joint. So what we have in front of us is the articulated skeleton of the knee seen from the anterior aspect. This is the left side. And here, the same thing we are seeing on the right side. Well, first let's take a look at the bones which participate in the knee joint. The knee joint basically has got two components. One is the femoral articulation with the tibia. I'm showing the left side. This is called the femorotibial articulation. That is one aspect of the knee joint. And the other aspect is the articulation of the femur with the patella, which we can see on the right side. This is the femoropatellar articulation. So these are the two components of the articulation. First, let's take a look at the surfaces which participate. So again, I've come to the left side. We can see this smooth surface here. This is the articular surface of the femoral condyle anteriorly, which articulates with the patella. So this is the lateral femoral condyle. This is the medial femoral condyle. And this is the intercondylar fossa. And this is the one which fits to the patella here. And we can see that here. So that is the femoral patellar component of the articulation. I'm going to subsequently remove the patella to show you the articular surfaces. The femoral condyle, the inferior surface, as you can see here, is sitting on the flat plateau of the tibial condyles. And that's what makes the femoral tibial articulation. Having said that, now let's take a look at the patella itself. So we are looking at the patella on the right side. And if you take a look at the patella in situ, if you notice, that the patella is roughly triangular in shape. It's got a superior base and an inferior apex. The lower portion is the apex. So this is the base of the patella. These are the sides of the patella on the either side. Attached to the superior aspect, the base of the patella, this red portion that you see here, that is where the quadriceps tendon is inserted. And over that, there's a thin aponeurotic sheet. And then from the apex of the patella to the stubal tuberosity, we have the strong, tough ligamentum patellae, which in effect is the continuation of the quadriceps tendon. Attached to the sides, we have the medial patellar retinaculum and the lateral patellar retinaculum. The medial patellar retinaculum is derived from aponeurotic expansion of the vastus medialis and the lateral patellar retinaculum is aponeurotic expansion from the vastus lateralis. These are attached to the sides of the patella and they are attached to the sides of the tibial condyles and these reinforce the anterior capsule of the knee joint. Having mentioned that, now I am going to lift up this patella and I am going to turn it. So I have turned it now. When we turn it, we notice several articular facets. This is the larger lateral articular facet of the patella and this is the smaller medial articular facet of the patella, which articulates respectively with this portion of the femoral condyle here, the medial one, and the larger lateral femoral condyle here. So therefore, if we were to take a very close look at the patella on the inside surface, we notice that there is a vertical ridge here, which separates the lateral from the medial. Each portion, the lateral and the medial, has got a faint superior articular surface, a middle articular surface, and an inferior articular surface. The same thing can be seen on the medial side also. Superior, middle, and inferior. And on the extreme medial side, there's a small vertical ridge, which is the medial non-articular part of the surface of the patella. Now, let's take a look at what happens when we flex the knee. So I'm going to show you on the left side, because this is already articulated. When we flex the knee, you notice there is a condyle of the tumor which is moving on the condyle of the tibia. At the same time, what happens to the patella? The patella is attached by the ligamentum patellae to the tibial tuberosity. So therefore, the patella moves down or in effect, patellar surface of the femur moves away and therefore this portion gets exposed. And this is the portion, this surface you can feel on yourself in your own knee when your knee is fully flexed. And this is the portion which is occupied by the suprapatellar bursa. So therefore, when we extend our knee, this patella then again comes back and sits here. And so therefore, at that point, the suprapatellar bursa is likely to get compressed between the patella and the femur. And at the same time, the articularis genu muscle pulls the suprapatellar bursa away from so that it does not get compressed between the femur and the patella. This is an anterior posterior x-ray of the knee to show the location of the patella when the knee is extended. And this is a lateral view of the knee to show the same situation. This is an arthrogram of the knee by injecting carbon dioxide to show the location of the suprapatellar bursa in relation to the patella. Now let's take a look at patellar dislocation with respect to something called a Q angle. The Q angle basically is an angle between the vertical mid patellar line or the line of gravity and the angle of the long axis of the femur. The long axis of the femur and the vertical mid patellar line. That angle is called the Q angle. The word Q stands for quadriceps. 
I'm going to show the same thing here. The vertical bit patella line is running right through the middle of the patella to the tibial tuberosity. This is the same as the line of gravity which goes through the head of the femur in a normal person. And the other line is the oblique line which goes from the anterior superior iliac spine or the greater trochanter and goes across the length of the shaft of the femur. That is the oblique line. And so therefore the angle between these two lines is called the Q angle. Normally this Q angle is approximately 9 degrees. Now we have two conditions. One of them is called genu valgum or knock knee. The other is called genu varum or bow leg. Now let's mimic these situations in this particular specimen here. We have mimicked the condition called genu valgum or knock knee on the right side. You notice that the line of weight bearing now is going through the lateral femoral condyle and the lateral tibial condyle. So there is excessive pressure on the lateral condyles. That's the first aspect of knock knee. So therefore there is a greater likelihood of degeneration of the lateral femoral condyles, both femur and tibia in knock knee. The next thing we notice is that the mid patellar line has shifted further medial. The mid patellar vertical line, which goes from the middle of the patella to the tibial tuberosity. Long axis of the shaft of the femur is this one. So therefore, now what has happened is the mid patellar line is not the same as the line of gravity because the line of gravity has now shifted further laterally. Mid patellar line has shifted medially and the long axis of the femur is still this. So therefore, our definition was the Q angle is the angle between the long axis of the shaft of the femur and the mid patellar line. And since the mid patellar line has moved medially, the Q angle has become more. So therefore, when the Q angle becomes more than 17 degrees, then it becomes significant genu valgum. In such a situation, there's a greater tendency for the patella to dislocate laterally by the stronger pull of the vastus lateralis. So this is what happens in genu valgum or knock knee. Now we shall mimic genu varum or bow leg. Now we have mimicked genu varum or bow leg. I've removed the patella because the patella is tending to fall away. We notice now line of weight bearing has gone through the medial condyles, both the femur and the tibia. So therefore the line of weight bearing tends to cause degeneration of the medial femoral condyles more often and therefore this portion gets degenerated. The second thing we notice is that line of weight bearing has gone medially, the mid patellar line has shifted laterally and this is the long axis of the femur. And again as per our definition the Q angle is the angle between the long axis of the femur and the mid patellar line and because the mid patellar line has shifted laterally the Q angle has become less than 9 degrees. So therefore, this is genu varum. And in this case, there is greater tendency of wear and tear of the medial condyles. So these are the points which I wanted to highlight to you about the articulation of the femoral patella, the dislocation of the patella, genu varum, genu valgum, and the Q angle. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. Please like and subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Have a nice day.